So let's get a check on the markets right now. As we just pointed out to you, the NASDAQ is ticking ever so slightly into the green. It was fractional losses for most of the session so far. The Dow Industrial is now only down just about 32 points, down one-tenth of 1%. 1 and the S&P down about one-quarter of 1%. 1 4504 was the last trade there. Uh, this is an interesting move only because there might have been folks out there who believed that yesterday's downdraft, which some would say was overdue, could have been the precipitating factor for something much worse, even so today. Josh, it didn't look like it was going to be massively down, but it did accelerate into the close yesterday. How do we feel about today's trading action? One of the things we were looking at yesterday is, OK, we're down, but what's really down the most? And interestingly, it tended to be the stocks that were up the most on the year. And I was, I was on uh, the air yesterday, and I was calling it uh, an upside-down day. Some people call it an inside-out day. But it was counter-trend. You had stocks, the top 20 performers in the market, uh, up an average of 83 percent. They were down an average of 3 percent yesterday, much worse than the overall tape. You also saw a lot of pain in, uh, in higher-yielding stocks, equities which makes sense. Uh, you got a higher yielding um, intermediate term bond, long bond. Maybe some people would say that's competition for flows. I'm not sure I 100 percent see it that way. I think what, what what's uh, we're probably just catching our breath here today from yesterday. I don't think anybody wants to make a really big commitment to one side of the, the market or the other ahead of Apple. Apple's going to move this market, whether you like it or not, even if it's a boring report. Um, the reaction to Apple is going to, I think, is going to speak volumes in terms of how August progresses. And the bad news is it's 30 times earnings, and it's a stock that is now going into its third consecutive quarter of contracting revenue. So the bulls would say, don't worry about revenue. They're actually expanding gross margins, 42 to 44 percent over the last two quarters. And that's what the street cares about. OK, maybe. I guess we're about to find out. All right, Brenda. I mean, this is this is your backyard. I mean, you're here with us right now, which is awesome. But when you're out in Silicon Valley, you're out in Northern California in the Bay Area. Apple dominates the business conversation because of its sheer heft, its sheer weight. Mm -hmm. How important is Apple going to be to that overall market narrative along the lines of what Josh was just saying? Well, I think Apple has been so incredibly successful, right? And even even in the last earnings number, even though it wasn't the overall earnings number wasn't great, we found out, you know, that a lot of people who had never bought an iPad bought an iPad. A lot of people who had never bought a watch were buying a watch. So Apple's still doing a great job of of, of adding these incremental um, devices. And then on the services side, of course, you have the better the better margin uh, coming through. But I think overall, what, what I'm concerned about more than anything is just the valuation of the stock, what expectations have become. Because I think if we look at well, how is this company going to act over the next decade, I just don't see a, a repeat of what happened over the prior decade. The company is just too big and has been incredibly successful. And that's great. But I think, does it warrant a 30 PE? I just don't think so, because I think growth is going to moderate, and it has. But I think even going forward, we're not going to see the type of growth we saw over the last decade. Jim, the, the, the interesting part about the mega cap trade is the move the needle argument and debate is always going to be there for these trillion dollar type companies out there. We have found some companies that have been able to move the needle, at least the perception of the needle dramatically, say with things like artificial intelligence or cloud computing or growth in certain other areas. I think of Microsoft, I think of Alphabet, I think of NVIDIA, of course. Apple can move the needle with investors if it can sell a good story. What is that good story going to be, and would it necessarily come out in this quarter's earnings report? Um, I want to start by saying I'm not going to damn app, Apple with faint praise. But <laughs> Brenda just said something kind of important. It's trading at 30 times earnings. If you look at FactSet, the long-term growth rate in earnings per share is, is around 9.9% projected. It gives a peg ratio of 3.0. Now, there's a lot of threes here. 30 times earnings. <laughs> three times peg ratio. You know what the 10-year annualized return on, on uh, Apple is? It's 30%, which is about three times the market's uh, overall return. Where am I going with this? Is like, yeah, it, Apple probably will move the market for one day, but ultimately you've got to recognize that it's very hard to get 30% per annum returns going forward in Apple from here. It's just really hard. Um, that's why I've been saying for quite some time, look outside of tech. I'm underweight Fang. That's been to my peril. If we get a pullback, I might add to Apple or any of a number of Fang names. Mm -hmm. But I do strongly believe that it's the rest of the market that has started the last two months to catch up. 
and probably will continue. Dom, by no means am I saying go out and sell Apple. All right, that's not the point. Do you think the shareholder base of Apple right now is expecting 30% annual returns for the next 10 years? I don't. Well, first off, I mean, how do we define the shareholder base, Josh? It's like the, the whole world, right? Well, I was going to say anybody who order, owns a the, spider the index, you know, owns the index a funds, Apple. The index funds and the, the largest uh, holders of Apple, do you think, you think most people expect Apple to do what it's I don't. I think they care more about stability, actually, than they care about, I mean, of course, everyone wants to earn returns. I, I'm sure you're right. But I, I, I think that that's the question. mindset of the Apple shareholder base I, today. I'm sure you're right. The reason I asked you that question and said the whole world is because the whole world is made up a bunch of different demographics in terms of investor styles. There's definitely some that are saying exactly what you want. In fact, it's me, by the way. I'm underweight Apple, but I own a 4.5% position. I want it to just chug along. If it gives me 10% per annum for the next three years, hallelujah. However, I do think still there is a large portion of the investor base in Apple that thinks this is going to return what it did over the last 10 years, that they've just been conditioned to expect that. They may not have the experience that you and I do. And, and I think that's a little bit of a danger, Josh, because if they're disappointed, they may sell their shares. But when I say a little bit of a danger, focus on a little bit.